We've seen a rash of dog attacks on the channel and they force you to make split second decisions to protect yourself. Thank you for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the United States. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. The good guy in this video who's coming outside right now is waiting for his daughter to take her to the store. He's actually a peace officer and he sees out of his corner of his eye a couple of dogs loose in this yard. From here we have audio, let's listen in and then we'll come back. I tried to. I didn't think. The, I didn't think this rope was gonna come untied. My mom just tied him up, bro. He a puppy, bro. He my no, seven year old daughter, bro. I don't know that. I just bro. got him for it, bro. I understand, but I don't know that. The come on, guy. Oh, you got a fucking kick running at me, dog. I understand, bro. I definitely understand, bro. But you ain't have to do that, bro. You could have got me. What the, the fuck am I gonna do? You could have was gonna bite you, bro. How the fuck do I know that? But you ain't give me a chance. Do I know that? The owner of the dog was cited for a vicious dog at large. The uh, defender wasn't cited for anything. They did try to save the dog. Unfortunately, the dog had to be euthanized. Tough decision that he had to make, but he acted quickly and I think in his family's best interests. We're going to have to talk about significant lessons out of this one. I do have a question for you out of this one, and that is what is your draw to first shot time? Have you timed yourself? getting that gun out of the holster and getting an accurate first shot on the target that you need to hit. And if you have, what did you get? I'm interested to see what our community is. I do this all the time when I'm really running hard. I can pull about 0 0.93, 0 0.94 at seven yards in A zone. And if I'm not as practiced, one flat, one one sometimes. I'm curious what you've got. Let's get to lessons. Our first lesson out of this one is to carry your firearm always. This guy's barely out of his front door. Now he is currently a peace officer, but was before that a concealed carry instructor. And thankfully he had his tool on him all the time. In the email that I got from him, I always carry my gun, even when I'm just gonna go 
and take the trash out or whatever because you never know what's going to come. And that's exactly true. Now you see him looking over here. There's got a couple dogs off leash that we can't see on the camera because he wants to see what's going on. Now he said emphatically he wasn't going to leave because he wanted to get and take his daughter with him. And then what happens is this dog you can see right here, you can just barely see through the bush, charges him. Now there were two dogs in the yard, but that one charges and you heard in the audio that he wasn't just charging like, hey, let's come and have some fun or whatever. He is charging while growling, right? you know, with the hackles up and all that stuff. This is a big deal and an imminent deadly threat. So this is the beep, guys. When, when things go down, you're going to have to be able to defend yourself very quickly and decide, what am I going to do? Is a dog coming in this manner a deadly threat? A hundred percent, yes, it is a deadly threat when it's coming after you. So he gets moving and starts drawing his gun. And he gets his gun out and on target here in about 1.6 seconds. And from concealment on the beep, when things are weird, you're not on the range, you're not anticipating things, that's not too bad. I will tell you that the faster you can get your gun out and on target, the better off you can do and the more options that you have. Now notice he didn't shoot right here. He got the gun out and ready though because he moved offline and that moved the dog. The dog stopped for just a minute to see what the heck was going on. So getting the gun out quickly gave him an opportunity to assess. And then when the dog chose to charge him a second time and come at him, that's when he fired. Now, I have some inside baseball here from our defender. He actually aimed this first one. It's a 40 cal that he's carrying, it was jacketed hollow points out of his service gun, but he hit that dog right on the back of its skull and he, they recovered a very uh, well mushroomed jacketed hollow point on the sidewalk next to the dog. It actually didn't penetrate the dog's skull. It actually bounced off the dog's skull and knocked him unconscious for a while. That's why you saw him go out. So that first shot may not do as much as you think it did. That's why he kind of jumped over and now he got three more shots at the dog, at least two of which hit the dog. One of them might've gone into, a, uh, into the berm. Now, I wanna talk about this. Recognize that dogs are property, okay? This isn't like shooting a human being. A dog aggressively attacking you is not going to cause you problems if you, were, if you shoot that dog. Now, you're gonna end up talking to the cops and you're gonna ruin the rest of your day. You might end up sending your gun as evidence. But if a dog is attacking you like this off leash, those kinds of things, you know, and comes after you, are you justified to shoot it all day, every day? Now, the reason that I want this to continue here is because I want to talk about the neighbors. Obviously, the reason that he didn't put his gun away here is because now the neighbor's arguing with him. Man, it was a puppy or whatever. Now, I totally agree with what our, our defender here said. Man, I don't know your dog. I don't know what's going on. Oh, he wouldn't have bit you, bro, or whatever. Recognize that if you have to defend yourself, even against somebody's dog, you are going to have to deal with the repercussions and the aftermath of that. So make sure you take yourself to a safer position. Now, he tells his daughter to go inside and call 911. Quite frankly, I think his best choice here would have been to go inside himself, lock the door, call 911, and wait for police to come. Now, I do think that eventually here, as they sat and argued with each other, this guy does eventually come up and say, hey man, I get it, I understand, you're right, my bad, or whatever. And, you know, I do want to say here, of course, the next thing I want to talk about is I know somebody's going to say here, well, he should have went and put that dog out of its misery. No. Now, I get it. If you have to shoot the dog in self-defense, that's one thing. But for you to now walk up and put another shot in that dog is not a defensive nature. That is not a shooting or a discharge of a firearm that is defending your life. And so you can be, uh, you know, uh, charged at that point with discharging a firearm in city limits and a host of other problems. So I get it. You want to put the dog out of its misery. You don't want an animal to unnecessarily suffer because of course you're a kind and good human being. But make sure you only use your firearm to defend your life, not in order to do something like that. And of course we don't want the dog to suffer. We don't want bad things like that to happen. But again, that's not our primary concern. Our primary concern is taking care of our family and making sure that they're safe. So the better thing to do here, get out of range of this guy. I get it, man, whatever. The cops are on their way. We'll talk when they get here and then let them deal with it. Yes, I do think they tried to, uh, you know, do something for the dog, but I got to tell you three bullets in a dog is just not going to do it any, any good day. That dog is not going to make it. Can't tell you enough. I don't think this is the fault of the dog nearly as much as it's the fault of the owner. Apparently the guy's mom had tied the dog up in the yard, but then the dog had gotten out of its leash. And so this is an owner problem because if the dog was appropriately in the house or in the backyard where there's a fence or even tied up in the front yard where he couldn't get away, then this never would have been a problem. So this particular one is an owner issue. Is it a justified shooting? Absolutely unequivocally, yes. Not just from the fact that he clearly was a deadly threat, uh, and, and when we say a deadly threat, what we mean by that, of course, is a threat of death or great bodily harm. And a dog charging you and attacking you can clearly put you in the hospital, cause you stitches, 
which is the definition of great bodily harm. But not only that, it's a dog. And so the standard is actually lower because this is property. You're not shooting a against a human being who has an estimable value, worth, and dignity, but against a dog. So let's use our firearms appropriately. I think that our good guy did that in this particular case. Let's watch the follow-up as well. Make sure that we have high level of firearm skills because on that day, you might need it to cover your ASP. 